Hey, this is Natasha Lara Lewis with Esther's Place, and today we're going to be making this little cutie a Twiggy Reindeer. We are featuring our kit. This is a wonderful way to introduce yourself to needle felting, a very easy project, and the kit includes everything that you need. So, we are going to be taking our kit and opening it up, and inside we're going to find all the pieces that we need for our project. So, I'm just going to take this bundle here and unroll it. We have, for needle felting, the Cheviot wool. Um, any coarser wool will do. It gives really a good strength and rigidity to our project. So as we unroll our bundle and check and see what supplies we have, you're gonna see that you've got four twigs for the feet. These can be anything from the great outdoors. What I do is I take and I cut my twigs and then I dry them in the oven. Uh, till they're nice and crispy, about 200 degrees for an hour or so. We've got some berries. These are wire uh, berries that you can find at the craft store. Then we've got some different colors. We've got uh, some white and red and black. You can probably guess that's for the face, right? And then we've got three pieces of varying sizes of the brown. I've got one piece that's about the size of my hand and about the width of my thumb. I've got another piece that is about two inches wide and about the size of my hand. That's for the head. And then I've got a really long piece. This is about uh, 16 inches long and this is for the body. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the body. The body is a very simple shape, a cylinder. We actually start with a cylinder for most animals. We are going to take your forefinger and we're going to wrap this around your forefinger. You want to wrap this nice and tight and nice and flat as you're doing this. This will ensure a really good start for the body. Anytime that you make a shape, the tighter that you do it, the less poking you'll have to do. So it'll save you on some time. Once I've got that tight around my finger, I'm going to take and actually tighten it even more, just scrunch it up on my finger. Then I'll take and carefully slide that off. I wanna make sure that I don't pull the guts out with it. So I'm gonna just carefully slide my finger out of there and then we're ready to start felting. Some other supplies that you'll need, of course, is your felting block with two felting needles. I keep mine stored on the side so that they won't break and we'll get those out and ready to use. So the next step is going to be taking and putting it down on your foam block. We're gonna be taking one of our needles and putting it through the middle of that foam all the way down through the cylinder into the foam. You can kind of hear it crunch into the foam. You want it to go all the way down into your foam and not to just stand up on the surface like that. We want it to actually get pressed down into the foam block so you can see only the top of the needle on your piece. Then we're going to take our other needle, and these are essentially the same needle. Of course, they have those tiny notches. If you take a close look at the end of the needle here, you'll see those little notches that tangle the wool together. And those are essentially the little barbs that catch the wool and turn it into felt. So both of these are the same needle. One is our helper needle to hold things in place, prevent us from poking our fingers. The other one we're gonna take and use for our poking. So we're just gonna start with straight up and down pokes. We're going into about the center of our shape. And we can poke in the side. And we can turn it around poke in the other side. Also, on the ends, I take and just stuff the wool into the middle a little bit. It looks a little bit like a cinnamon roll, like a roll around on the end. Just tuck your wool in there. It makes for a little better finish. So we're going to take and poke on the ends, on the sides, and on the other end here. And we're just going to keep on poking that till it turns into a nice little cylinder. We want it to be nice and sturdy. We want it to be smooth. If you brush your fingers across the surface, it should be nice and smooth. So we're just gonna do that for a few minutes here until it starts to hold together. So I'm going a little here, a little there, kind of rotating it as I go. And keep an eye out on your fingers. We'll take that helper needle out and we're gonna turn this ever so slightly, put that helper needle back in, and then we'll continue poking. So it's almost like a rotisserie. We're just going to keep poking and turning as we go, kind of poking and turning as you go. 
This will give them a nice body shape. If you're getting a dachshund instead of a reindeer, that can happen. Um, you're going to take and turn it up and poke down into the top here. Watch your fingers here. Turn it over, poke on the other side. That will help to reduce the length of it and get it a little skinnier. <clears throat> all right, so it's gonna take a few minutes to get this all poked. As you can see now, I've got my helper needle off to the side here and I'm just poking with the one, being very careful as I rotate around to watch my fingers. Now this is a great beginning project because there's only a few simple shapes and not a lot of uh, not a lot of really special detail. Very easy, easy project to start with. So hope you're enjoying it as you work alongside. Okay, so now that we've got a good body, and what we're looking for with that body is if we take and brush our fingers over the surface, there shouldn't be a lot of extra fuzz. And if you squeeze it, it shouldn't bounce back into shape too much. It should be nice and smooth, nice and solid all the way throughout. Then we're ready to start on the head. So we're just gonna set that body aside, come back to it after we do our head. The head is the piece that is about the size of your hand. We're gonna take this and roll it into a bit of a different shape. This is actually a ball versus a cylinder, which we just did. So we're gonna tuck the ends in and then fold the sides in tuck and fold, tuck and fold. It's kind of like you're making a burrito. So you wanna fold the sides in and roll very tight. Anytime that you do this, the tighter that you roll it, the less poking you're gonna to have to do later. So when we end up, we're gonna have a piece that's a nice ball and we're going to have it be about the size of our thumb the shape of our thumb, I should say. It's gonna look like your thumb if you hit it with a hammer. It's gonna be a little bigger than your thumb, but it's gonna be a nice little ball, kind of a ball slash an egg shape. We're gonna then take and put that into your foam. Same idea, put one needle through to hold it, and we're gonna poke on that for a few minutes, just the same way. Now, as I'm continuing poking, I'm actually going to do more shallow pokes and that is helpful in giving me a smoother surface. One way to regulate those pokes so you don't go as deep is to take your needle and hold it right here where you can feel the needle start to get smaller. You wanna take and hold your finger here so as you're poking, it gives you a stopper. Instead of holding it at the top, I'm holding my finger here where the needle gets smaller and that'll help to stop me from poking very deep. So I'm going to do that on these smaller objects for sure, but anywhere I want a nice smooth surface, I'll just do those small pokes. Same way, we're going to poke a little bit on the ends, a little bit on the top, and then like a rotisserie, take that needle out and rotate it just a little bit. So eventually what we're aiming for is a nice head shape. We want to get a smooth back of the head and a rounded front of the head. On our farm, we raise the sheep that this wool comes from, but my mom's always had a fascination with reindeer. So one time she looked into getting a reindeer and apparently they're pretty hot commodity, not so easy to come by and quite expensive. So we decided that we would just put little antlers onto the miniature ponies and we'd be happy at that. So we've yet to get our reindeer on the farm, but for now, I'm pretty happy with some sheep. They're pretty big animals compared to our little Cheviot sheep, so I'll be happy with the sheep for now. We'll make felt reindeer and every, everybody will be happy. <laughs> All right, so now we've got a good shape started. It's a round ball and I think we're about ready maybe a little more poking as we turn it around. Almost ready to start adding those details. Those details are going to be the eyes, the nose, and eventually ears and a tail. All right. So now, as you can see, we've got a nice round shape, but we've also got a flat back of the head and a rounded front. So that's what we're aiming for. Now we're going to put in an indentation, a line 
to separate the forehead from the muzzle. So I'm going to do that about two-thirds of the way, well about half, maybe half to a third of the way down. We're going to draw an imaginary line across here and we're going to felt that with our needle. So it's going to look something like this. We're just going to take and do across the face from one side to the other. We're going to end up getting a bit of a line formed across. You can see right here on the side profile, you have a forehead up here and you have the muzzle down the front. So that line goes straight across the head, Oops. straight across the head, and it'll give us a place to put the eyes. So this is how I do a lot of creatures, like dogs and things like that, is I take and separate the forehead from the muzzle right here. So once we've felted that in place, we're going to poke two <clears throat> indentations, little eye sockets where the eyes are going to go. <clears throat> All you wanna do is poke a little spot for the eyes, Okay, so now we've got two little spots for the eyes to go. They're a little hard to see in the dark wool, but they're just a little indentation for that eye. So now we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of the white from our bundle. Now the eyes can be done a couple different ways. I'm going to show you how to do it on a dark wool so that the eyes are going to stand out. If you have a lighter colored wool, you can get by with just making black dots for the eyes. For this darker wool, we're going to take and tear off a shred of the white. Now this is very small. I'm going to actually divide this into two. So really, it's just the very smallest little piece of wool for the eye. We're going to roll that in your fingers and breathe on it with your mouth. <sighs> because the moisture in your mouth helps the fibers to gather together a little bit easier. So now we have this very tiny little ball that's going to go into the eye socket with one needle and you're going to poke with the other needle. So we're going to poke that into the eye. Okay, so now that I've poked that in, I can take and rub it and it's not going to come out. It's in there pretty securely. So we'll do the same with the other eye. Roll that up. Hold it in. Poke it in. Okay. Now you have a zombie looking reindeer. Time to add a little bit of black. We'll do the same exact thing, but smaller amounts of black that will go in the eye as well. If you're using our kit, we have things kind of pre-portioned into what you need. So we'll tear that black into two pieces, roll it, breathe on it, put it in with one needle, poke it in with the other one. Okay, so this eye is going to go <clears throat> something like this. So we've got a little bit of the white and a little bit of the black underneath it. It's always a good idea when you're adding something like an eye to go around the outside edges first It'll give you a much sharper edge, and then you can do the poking for the middle of it. And of course, you know, it's always, you get a perfect first one, and the second one always is a little bit finicky. Okay. So now we have our two eyes in place, the white followed by the black or if you're doing this on a lighter wool, you can do all black. Now we're gonna add our nose, and our nose is going to be the piece of red here. We are going to roll that up into a little ball. So just kind of like we did the head, you're gonna roll and tuck, roll and tuck, 
into a nice little ball and then pin that in directly at the end of the face. We do not want that to go um, too far down off of the face. We want that to be, you know, pretty much on the face directly. And then we're going to go ahead and poke that a bit around the edge there. Okay, he looks pretty cute. He's got his little nose in there now. So the last thing we're gonna do is on the front of the face, we're gonna draw, just like we did with the crease, we're gonna draw a line straight down from the nose here. And it's gonna give him some cute little cheeks. So just poke a line, a little ridge coming straight down from the nose. Okay. And there we have our cute little reindeer head. He's got just a little line coming down from the face and he's got his eyes and his nose. So now we are about ready to begin the ears and the tail. So we've got our head, we've got our body. Now we just need the ears and the tail. So for those, we're gonna take our brown piece here. We're gonna actually split this into four pieces two for the ears, one for the tail, and one for a little extra fiber in case we need to cover anything, especially when we do our gluing. You will need a hot glue gun, so if you don't have that going at this point, you might wanna plug that in and get it warmed up. So we're going to take and split this down from the top, split it in half, and split each of those halves again. This is the easiest way to split this wool is just to start at the top and pull it straight down. We're gonna take one of those pieces now and we're gonna wrap that around our pinky finger. And this is gonna give us nice evenly measured pieces. So I'm taking and wrapping it flat and smooth around my pinky finger until I've got a good little shape formed. Then I'm gonna take and pull that off of my finger and I'm gonna put that in between my fingers here and I'm gonna roll that, just roll and roll and roll till it's smooshed down a little bit so I can start felting it. So I've got it in between my two fingers here and I'm rolling it as I go. Now we've got a good little ear shape. So this is what we're aiming for. We're gonna keep it fluffy right here where my fingers are pinching it. We're gonna keep that fluffy so when we attach to his head it'll be a lot easier. So you're going to do that for all three pieces for the ears and the tail. Now what I like to say is go ahead and make three. Your two that match the best are going to become the ears and the third one is going to become the tail. So I'm gonna pin that into my foam block with one needle. I'm gonna leave this little edge fluffy, not felting it. I'm gonna go around the outside edge first to poke that down, then poke the entire thing so it's nice and flat. So we'll go around the edge first, and then the whole thing till it's nice and flat. All right, flip it over to the other side, poke with the very short, shallow pokes on the other side till it all gets nice and flat. Once we've got our ear shape done, it's gonna be a little fuzzy. You can see some of those fuzzes at the bottom. Put it back into your fingers and roll it again, blow on it, roll it some more, and you'll be amazed. It's now nice and smooth, none of those little fuzzies. So you're gonna go ahead and create three just like that. The last one is going to be the tail. So we take and wrap, pull it off your finger, roll it in your hands, and then felt that on your foam block. Now most deer have a little bit of a white tail, so we're gonna put a tiny bit of white into the one that is the tail. Okay, so now I have a second little ear, and we're gonna go ahead and make that third little ear for that little deer. <laughs> and wrap around your finger, pull it off your finger, roll that in your fingers, 
and then poke that down on the foam. Roll it some more. Okay, voila, we now have three pretty similar looking ears. Now if I look at them, I'm going to say that probably these two match more and this one is going to be my third for my tail. So set your ears aside. Those are going to be used in a minute, but we're going to put the white on the tail. So take your tail and grab a little pinch of white, just a teeny tiny little bit, don't need a lot. We're going to roll that up and we're going to place that on the tail kind of like that, and then poke that in with very short, shallow pokes. If you poke this too deep, you're going to push the color through to the other side, and you're going to get a peppery colored tail. So just very short little pokes. Again, go around the outside first, then felt the middle until we've got a nice little tail. Ta-da! Now we've got a little white, white inside for the tail. And we're going to give that one last roll after we've completed that. Okay, looks like it's time for assembly. We're going to take and assemble the head with the ears on it. So let's put those ears on the head first. So the ears are going to get placed onto the head, pinned in, and then poked in there. So I like the ears to go out or up, but really once you get those antlers on there, it's going to look great. So I just pin in the ear, with one needle and then poke it with the other needle. So right now I've got the one ear in. You want to take your needle out and give it the tug test to make sure that it doesn't uh, come off. And then we'll do the same with the other ear. The reason we kept it fluffy at one end was because we wanted to make sure that those fuzzy fibers helped us in actually getting it attached. Okay, we're going to do the tug test. Okay, one ear on, other ear on. Oh, that's looking cute. Now we can take and position it onto our body. Now we want to make sure that we do not give him the Eeyore effect by putting his head a little too low on the body. We want it to go right at the top here, right at this corner of the body. Now if you have an exceptionally long head, it's best to move your head back a little bit, but you want it just to be resting right there on the corner. So we're going to take position it how you like and then hold it, put it onto your foam block and pin one needle from the body into the head. So it's going to look a little bit like this. We have a needle going from the body into the head and then firmly into the foam. So now I can shake this. He's stuck on there and I can now felt the body up into the head. So I'm going to go all the way around the body poking it into the head. And this will make sure that it gets attached well, but it'll also give us some nice shoulders and kind of finish him off a little bit as we attach it. So I've just done around one edge. I'm going to take that needle out and we're going to turn him, whoops, we're going to turn him to another side and felt it on the other side. So we're just going to rotate all around to make sure that he's in there securely. So we want to turn it to the bottom and felt the chest into the head here, turn it to the side, turn it to the top, turn it to the other side. So now I've actually got him upside down on his head and I'm working around this whole region right here to make sure it's attached. Also if you give it the wiggle test, that head should be on there firmly and we shouldn't have to worry about it falling off. <laughs> okay. So now we are going to put the tail on the back. Very easy, just attach it onto the back. We're going to do it so the tail is sticking up like a little deer. So position it, pin it in with one needle, and then go ahead and poke with the other one. Okay, so now we've got a tail, we've got a body, we've got a head, and we've got some ears. Pretty cute. He's ready for the glue gun. So now we're going to glue in the antlers and the legs. 
So our glue gun, which is standing by here, we're going to take and put a little bit of glue onto the antlers and the antlers are going to go on the back of the head right here. So we're gonna get a little more light over here so we can see. There we go. So on the back of the head, we're going to attach the antlers. The antlers will get a bit of glue on them. <clears throat> so we're just going to take and actually put a little glue directly onto the antlers. And I am using the hot glue gun. Do you see that glue on there? We're going to then put it directly onto the head. And we want to work a little bit quickly here. So we're going to do them both at the same time. And then we're gonna cover any extra glue very quickly with a bit of wool. So you can see I've got both of my antlers on while it's still hot. We're gonna take a little bit of extra wool. Remember we saved some. And we're gonna kind of make a little patch and put that on top of the antlers where the glue is. Now be careful with your fingers. If you haven't used a glue gun, it's pretty hot. It can burn your fingers, so be careful. So now I just put that extra tuft of wool directly over where I glued. And you wanna do this while that glue is still hot. So if you're doing this, take and tear off a little bit of wool first and have it ready. So when you put the glue right onto the antlers and attach it on the head, you can slap that piece of wool right over it and it's going to stick. So right now, we've got the antlers covered. We're gonna take and needle felt that just a little bit back here to smooth it out. So any extra fuzzes, take a needle. Now you'll notice where the glue is, your needle's not going to go in. So you just have to go around it. Kind of make this, make it work the best you can. But all you're trying to do is just hide some of the glue effect. And it looks pretty good. I mean, you can't, you really can't see any of the antlers now. They're all hidden by the wool. So now that we've got the antlers in, we can rearrange them. We can take and kind of bend them however we like to make them look really cute. Okay, so now our little antlers are on. We are then going to add the legs. The legs are our four sticks. So what we wanna do is we wanna take and add the glue to the end of the stick. Do not add the glue to the wool because you'll get a mess. Add the glue to the stick. So we're gonna, again, work really quick because we wanna get these on one at a time. You're gonna add a little glue to the end of our stick here and I have just enough, not too much, it's not over the edge, just a little bit on the end. And then I'm going to take and position it onto the bottom of the reindeer. And then I'm going to twist one way, twist the other way. Twist, 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 twist. And what that is doing is it's helping the fibers around to kind of gather and hold it in a little better. So I'm twisting it back and forth and back and forth. So there is our one leg. We're going to go ahead and add the next one right next to it. And then the other two will get a little further down. Okay, in that leg goes, we're gonna twist, 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 till we've got that in that securely. Now, if you're making this into an ornament, you really don't have to worry too much about the legs. They're gonna dangle, so you don't have to worry about it standing. If you do wanna make it standing, like this little guy here, you might have to trim the legs a little bit to get them to stand at the right height and everything. Even then, they can sometimes look like they've just slid onto a ice skating rink or something, but it's part of their cuteness appeal, right? Okay, the last leg's gonna go in. And one more. Okay, so we have all four legs glued in right now. It's a little floppy, but he probably needs a little assistance standing. So what I suggest is you can, after removing some of the glue strings from him, you can reinforce these legs a little bit with some extra fiber. So what I do is I take some of that extra here, divide it into four pieces, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to wrap it around the bottom right here where it meets the body. Just 
just going to take and wrap to reinforce it a little bit. So I've wrapped it around this leg. See how I've just added a little bit there? And then I'm going to poke it into the body and just kind of help give it a little more stability. Again, you'll probably hit some glue. That's okay. Just take and needle felt it a little bit. So I'm going to do that with each one of these legs. Just reinforce with a little fiber wrapped around there. And that'll help them to stand a little bit stronger. Okay, two legs are done. So you can see this side has the reinforcement on it and this side does not. So we've just got a little bit of strength. We're going to do the other side with each one of those pieces. Okay, now that's just an extra step that you can do if you're, again, if you're using it as an ornament, you can just hang it and it will probably be just fine, but that helps to give them a little more stability. So let's see now. Sometimes his legs need to be trimmed a little bit too. Whoop, there he goes. He's been hitting the eggnog a little too hard, I guess. So now he can stand. He's had a little more strength added to him. So there's our little reindeer. He's pretty cute, a pretty fun project. I do this with kids and adults alike. It's a really great, great, easy project for the holiday season. Um, and you can add different kinds of antlers. Sometimes I find like white sparkly ones, which are really fun to carry it into winter. Um, I'll give you another idea here. I like to sometimes put them onto a wood base, and this is a really pretty way to help your reindeer stand a little bit more. So this is just a simple, wood base that you can get at the craft store or if you're crafty uh, you can cut your own and I put a few embellishments on there some different little you know fun things to dress it up and then I just simply put a little glue on the sticks and then place it on there and so this is really nice because now he's standing nice and secure and you can set it out on your Christmas table or whatnot it's really quite a fun project a really simple project as you see and something that you can have a lot of fun and creativity with. So all you need is a few simple supplies, a glue gun, felting needles, some wool, a little creativity, and this tutorial. If you do want to purchase a kit, we have those for sale on our website or on our Etsy shop, Esther's Place on Etsy. Um, it gives you all the directions and the fibers that you need. The twigs, everything is included.